Yolanda and Ringo sit at a diner drinking coffee. They talk intensely about the idea of robbing places, saying that they will never work day jobs. Ringo gets the idea of robbing restaurants, saying it would be the best place to rob because it is so unexpected. Yolanda takes to the idea and says she is ready to rob the diner they're at. They stand up on the table with their guns pointed, shouting that they are robbing the place. Jules and Vincent, dressed in identical black suits, ride in a car, talking about Europe and how different it is from America in subtle ways. They stop at an apartment complex and get handguns out of the trunk. Vincent mentions Antoine Rocamora, a man who their boss Wallace beat up over a supposed foot massage that Antoine gave Mia, Wallace's wife. They discuss whether or not Antoine deserved what he got. Jules says it was extreme, while Vincent says he should have expected it because foot massages are sensual. They arrive at an apartment door, and the door is opened by Marvin. Inside the apartment, there are three men. There is Marvin, standing by the door, one who lay on the couch, and Brett, who sits at a table eating a burger. Jules turns his attention to Brett and asks him if he can try his burger and drink. He eats his burger and gulps down the remainder of his drink. He asks if the men know why he and Vincent are there and where their stuff is hidden. Vincent retrieves their briefcase from a cupboard, puts in the passcode, and it opens. A golden light is reflected upon Vincent's face. Brett starts to get nervous and tries to apologize and reason with them. Jules shoots the man on the couch while Brett rambles on. Brett panics and freezes up, and Jules shoots him in the shoulder. Jules begins to recite a passage from the Bible, Ezekiel 25:17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who, in the name of charity and goodwill, shepherds the weak through the valley of the darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. At the end of this verse, Jules and Vincent shoot Brett to death. Butch stands in a bar, being lectured by Marcellus Wallace. Wallace tells him he has ability, but his days are about over and he needs to be realistic. He tells him he never made it as a boxer, and if he was gonna make it, he would have by now. He hands him a stack of money. He asks if they have a deal and tells him that in the fifth round, Butch will go down. Vincent and Jules enter the bar in gym attire and flip-flops, here to see their boss, Wallace. Vincent and Butch have an unfriendly exchange. Wallace calls Vincent over and they embrace like old friends. Vincent buys heroin at his dealer, Lance's house. He shoots up and goes to pick up Mia, as he promised his boss Wallace that he would take her out while he was out of town. High and smiling, Vincent arrives at Mia's. He enters the house and looks around, as Mia watches him on a screen. She speaks to him out of an intercom and tells him to make a drink. He goes to the bar, and she continues to watch him while he makes his drink while she does lines of cocaine. They pull up at Jack Rabbit Slim's, a diner that Mia wanted to go to. It's an old-fashioned diner where all the staff are dressed up as famous people like Marilyn Monroe and Mamie Van Doren. They sit in a car booth, order their food, and talk about the pilot she was in, called Fox Force 5. She explains that her character was supposed to tell a joke every episode, but that she only got to tell one joke due to the show getting cancelled. She refuses to tell him the joke. They share an uncomfortable silence, and she mentions that you know you found someone special when they have the ability to share a comfortable silence. She tells him to think of something to say while she goes to the bathroom. Vincent asks her for her opinion on Antoine getting thrown out of a window because of her and the foot massage. Surprised, she completely dispels the rumor. They jump on stage and enter a dancing competition and win a trophy. When they arrive back at home, Mia is wearing Vincent's jacket. He spins her around and they laugh. Vincent goes to the bathroom, giving himself a long heart-to-heart -heart in the mirror, calling the situation a moral test that is meant to challenge his loyalty. He is clearly attracted to Mia and talks himself into going home. While this is happening, she is dancing outside to the music and finds a bag of drugs in his pocket. Thinking it is cocaine, she takes it out and snorts a line. He comes out of the bathroom to find that she has snorted his heroin. She lay on the ground, blood coming out of her nose, and a white substance coming out of her mouth. He freaks out and picks her up, manically driving away with her while he calls his dealer. His dealer Lance, who sits on the couch eating cereal in his bathrobe, finally answers the phone. Vincent says he's in big trouble and is coming to his house, with the overdosing Mia. 
Lance refuses, but Vincent shortly shows up and crashes into his house. Vincent begins to drag Mia through the lawn to his house and says that if Mia dies, he will have to tell Wallace that Lance didn't help him save Mia. Jody, Lance's wife, freaks out as Vincent and Lance scream at her to get an adrenaline shot out of the fridge. Lance and Vincent argue over who is going to give her the shot. They try to find her heart and mark it with a marker. And Lance tells Vincent he has to give her the shot and pierce through her breastplate. The anticipation builds and Vincent stabs her in the heart with the needle. She immediately wakes up, the needle still in her chest. Vincent drives Mia back home and Vincent pleads that they keep this a secret. She agrees and decides to tell him her joke. Three tomatoes are walking down the street. A papa tomato, a mama tomato, and a little baby tomato. Baby tomato starts lagging behind. Papa tomato gets angry, goes over to the baby tomato, and squishes him, and says, catch up. She turns to leave, and he blows her a kiss. Child Butch sits in front of a TV, and a military man enters the room, explaining that he is his father's friend, who was in a POW camp with him. He gives Butch a watch that his dad smuggled through the war, explaining that it was a family heirloom and how they had to hide it up their butt to keep it safe from the enemy. Adult Butch wakes up on a table, his boxing gloves and robe on. He kills his opponent in the boxing match. Butch quickly flees, getting into a cab with a young Spanish driver. Wallace and his men quickly arrive on the scene, and Wallace sends men out to search for Butch. Back in the cab, his driver asks what it feels like to kill a man. He says he doesn't feel the least bit bad about it. The cab drops him off at a motel, and he gets into bed with his girlfriend, Fabienne. They agree that they will be killed if they are found, and that they need to leave town the next day. Upon waking, he gets ready and goes through their suitcases, realizing his watch is nowhere to be found. He gets extremely angry, and decides to go back to his apartment to get the watch. Fabienne fears the gangsters will be there looking for him. He gets into his apartment complex, constantly looking over his shoulder. He goes into his apartment, grabs his watch, and starts to make a Pop-Tart in the toaster. He then notices a large gun on the counter, and hears the toilet flush. He grabs the gun and shoots the man. He looks at him and realizes it's Vincent, who he ran into at the bar earlier. He quickly leaves the apartment and gets into his car, happy to be on his way. When he stops at a red light, he notices Wallace crossing the street on foot in front of him. They make eye contact, and Butch floors it, running the red light, running over Wallace and knocking him onto the ground. Butch crashes into a car and Wallace begins to shoot at him. Trying to escape, Butch runs into a pawn shop with Wallace running after him. They fight, and just as Butch pulls a gun on Wallace, the store owner pulls a gun on Butch and tells him to drop his weapon. The shop owner knocks him out. Once they come to, they are both tied up and muzzled. The shop owner and his friend Zed, who is dressed in sheriff's clothing, decide on who they will do first. Zed tells his friend to wake up the gimp, who is locked in a box, dressed in a full latex outfit, and chained on a leash. Zed and the shop owner take Wallace to a back room, and the shop owner ties up the gimp. They rape Wallace. Butch breaks out of his restraints, knocks out the gimp, and goes upstairs to make a break for it. When he gets to the door to leave, he has a change of heart, and decides he should go back and save Wallace. He looks for a weapon, and picks up a katana. He goes back downstairs and busts into the door where they are raping Wallace and slashes the shop owner with the katana, killing him. Wallace grabs a shotgun and shoots Zed in the dick. Wallace says he will call his men to come and torture Zed and tells Butch to go, but that he can never come back to LA. Butch rides off on Zed's motorcycle, picks up Fabian and flees town. Taken back to one of the first scenes of Vincent and Jules in Brett's apartment, a man hides in the bathroom with a gun. He hears Jules reciting his Bible verse to Brett. After they shoot Brett, the man storms out of the bathroom with his gun and shoots many times at Jules and Vincent. Miraculously, they don't get hit by any bullets and fire back at the man, killing him. Jules and Vincent discuss luck or divine intervention, with Jules being convinced that their survival was an act of God. They leave the apartment, and Marvin gets in the car with them. Jules says because of this miracle, he is going to decide to retire. Vincent turns around to ask Marvin what he thinks and ends up accidentally shooting him in the face. They freak out and Jules calls his friend Jimmy. They go to his house to get the car off the road. They get to Jimmy's house, covered in blood and guts. Jimmy is clearly upset and tells them he needs to call his people and get out of his house before his wife gets home. He calls Wallace, who says the wolf should be on the way shortly to help. The wolf pulls up and comes inside. 
He looks at the dead body and bloodied car and gives Vincent and Jules instructions to put the body in the trunk, clean out the car, and cover the interior in blankets and linen. They follow his instructions, get hosed off, and changed into the gym clothes and flip-flops that belong to Jimmy. They drop the car off at a tow yard and the wolf drives off. Vincent and Jules decide to get breakfast at the diner that was in the opening scene. Yolanda and Ringo begin their robbery, raiding the registers and collecting the customers' wallets. Jules, sitting at his table, draws his gun and hides it underneath the table. When Ringo approaches to take his wallet and the briefcase, he takes Ringo's gun and tells him to sit across from him at the table. He recites his 2517 Bible verse to him, telling him that he is the tyranny of evil men, but he is trying hard to be the shepherd. He allows Ringo and Yolanda to leave with the cash from the robbery, but not the briefcase. Jules and Vincent leave the diner, briefcase in hand.